here, British Columbia, Kelowna. It was here at the Orchard Park Mall in Kelowna that 27-year-old Caitlin Potts was last seen on February 21st, 2016. After days with no communication with family or friends and fearing for her safety, she was reported missing to the Vernon RCMP. Caitlin was raised in Pigeon Lake, Alberta, one of seven children in the Potts household. She was funny and outgoing and loved to spend time with her family. At the time of Caitlin's disappearance, she was living in the town of Enderby, which was nestled in the Salmon Arm region of British Columbia. It's not known why she made the 81 kilometer trip to Kelowna, only that it was the last formal sighting of her. At any time during this broadcast or afterward, if you have any information that might help solve the case of the mysterious disappearance of Caitlin Potts, visit our website. Someone out there has answers. Our goal is to find them. How could Caitlin vanish without a trace? Is someone close to her responsible? And is foul play suspected? What happened to Caitlin Potts? Caitlin's mom, Priscilla Potts, remembers how important family was to her daughter. She's the second oldest of uh, the girls. She was protective, always trying to look after the younger ones, I guess. Right up until her disappearance, we, we like always got together and always did things. Um, as a family, and I think those were the things that they, she looked forward to. As a young girl, Caitlin not only shared a room with her older sister, Ashley Potts, but also her love of reading and her excitement about being a girl guide. She'd come home and tell me what she's learned or, you know, stuff like that. And then when we'd get ready for bed, she would always read books. She was always reading all the time. The dictionary, that was so weird, but yeah, she would read the dictionary and I'd always tell her to shut the light off. Caitlin had a passion for cooking and loved finding recipes for her family. She was always uh, getting her recipes off the internet and they're always uh, healthy, like a lot of soups and sal salsa dip. Over the years, life changed for Caitlin. She became a loving mother to a son but she was also known to struggle with addictions and had an abusive relationship with a man in Enderby, BC. Although the man disputed Caitlin having been his girlfriend and living with him, he admitted to having a relationship with her and to her staying with him for a time. In May of 2017, the man was found guilty of assault with a weapon, a crime he committed against Caitlin in 2014. She came home all um, beat up and she was scared and I've never seen her scared the way she was before. Her boyfriend threatened harm to her and she asked me what she should do and that's uh, when I told her. I warned her he's gonna kill her if she doesn't, if she keeps going back and she said, I know. In 2016, Caitlin went missing Corporal Dan Moskalek of the RCMP reports on her case. Caitlin was reported missing to the Vernon RCMP uh, on uh, March 1st of 2016. Um, the information given by the family was that she was last uh, heard uh, from uh, on uh, February 22nd. Um, later on in the investigation, uh, we were able to obtain um, security video footage um, that was dated uh, February 21st, which put her last known location being the Orchard Park Mall in Kelowna. Um, the images that uh, were depicted on the video footage uh, was of Caitlin entering the mall, um, and uh, that was the last known confirmed location that we had for her. She was wearing a, a three-quarter length black coat with the hood on it, with a light colored pants. Uh, she had her hair back uh, with a hair tie or a scrunchie, uh, and she was carrying a beige, large beige purse and was seen carrying her white cell phone.
The news about Caitlin's disappearance soon reached her sister, Ashley. It was exactly a week after I had my daughter. Um, I got a phone call from my sister, Cheyenne, saying that Caitlin's been reported missing. Caitlin Potts never came back, and her name was added to a growing list of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls in the Vernon Sycamus Corridor of British Columbia. Caitlin's family is still looking for answers. The RCMP's investigation took a tragic turn, multiplying questions and the heartbreak of a beautiful life senselessly taken. If you have any information, visit our website. Caitlin Potts was only 27 years old when she was videotaped on a security camera on February 21st, 2016 at a mall in Kelowna, British Columbia. Throughout her life, Caitlin fought to rise above the circumstances following the birth of her son, an abusive relationship, and her addictions. She had goals and dreams of a better life that would never become reality. Caitlin's family is left grieving the loss of a daughter, sister, auntie, and mom. Her life was full of challenges beginning at a young age that took her in many directions and down a path she struggled to survive. Caitlin's days of sharing a room with her sister, Ashley, reading her books, and talking about girl guides was brought to an end when the Potts children were placed into foster care. When we were separated, I didn't, like I see her at school and that was it. Like we'd sometimes have visits and um, like I don't remember really seeing her. Like I was too busy doing my own thing. And from what she told me, it, it wasn't a happy time for her. Um, a lot of stuff went on that I had no idea about. Caitlin eventually disclosed the abuse she suffered while in foster care. I know because she told me and it, she didn't tell me until two years before her disappearance. In spite of her difficult childhood, Caitlin was resilient and adventurous. She was always learning something. She was always, if I had a hard time with, uh, like she's the one who showed me how to email transfer and do <laughs> all that stuff on the internet. Call her and I'd, I'd, I'd you know, can, can I get some help with this? <laughs> or when are you gonna be back? <laughs> I'm on the other side of town, I'll be back later. <laughs> she loved the outdoors. We're from Pigeon Lake, so, I mean, she would come on the weekends, she'd walk down the trail with a blanket and just sit by the fire all night and just sleep there. But they'd take a, a trip, like a day trip to Banff and, you know, go through the trails. Like, she'd always be um, taking videos of, like, the wilderness and just going through trails, climbing. She just loved the outdoors. Caitlin was a free spirit who brought light and laughter into the world, and she was a mom who loved her son. But Caitlin was also dealing with an abusive relationship and would turn to her mom for advice. She was trying to leave her boyfriend. She came home to Calgary. Um, she asked me, what, she, what should I do, mom? And I said, well, you gotta go to treatment. You gotta go to treatment. You need treatment from him. And then the drugs, especially. She had to go for straining order also. Uh, yeah, that was the other thing I, I told her. She did, she got on it right away. She went to um, a three month women's program in Calgary. And I noticed a big change in her. She knew that for once in her life, I think that she knew what, like, what she was doing for herself. Caitlin's healing continued and the possibility of a new future was in her grasp. I can just see it, like the glow, or, you know, her in her face and, and 
just by her talking or, or saying things that she was starting to understand and realize that there's, there's another, you know, there's a different way. Caitlin was able to connect with her mom and share experiences that were a part of her healing journey. You know, the things she was coming out with, but about her past, about, uh, you know, the sexual abuse and foster care and um, some other things. And, um, and I knew I wasn't too worried then. I, I was so happy for her. Close to the end of completing her treatment, Caitlin shared some unfortunate news with her mom. She was to be released from the program. She goes, guess who I talked to? And I said, don't tell me, don't tell me. I said, I already know. I said, just just when you think you're, you're, you're strong, you're gonna fall. I said, don't even go there, I don't go back. Caitlin was reported missing to the Vernon RCMP on March 1st, 2016. And to protect the integrity of the investigation, details as to who may or may not have been interviewed about her disappearance could not be disclosed by the police. It was made clear though that the status from missing person to homicide was determined. Um, I can't uh, discuss the exact details as to what led us to determine that we were in fact dealing with a homicide, but certainly the case evolved into what we know and feel uh, that uh, certainly this is this is a homicide death and not a case of a missing person who does not want to be found. British Columbia is world renowned for its breathtaking landscapes, vast wilderness and lakes and waterways. A postcard setting that also has a dark history stained with decades of cases involving missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. Jody Leon is a missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls advocate who also lives in the region of Splats and First Nation, where Caitlin Potts and other women have mysteriously met tragic circumstances. So in terms of uh, the women that went missing, there was Caitlin Potts and Ashley Simpson and Deanna Wirtz. And at that time when Caitlin had gone missing, three of them had gone missing sort of in a sequence. There were, um, was two other w women that additionally went missing. And so that was concerning, you know, because five in such a small area, and although the RCMP have said that the cases are not connected, um, living within the nation, living within the area, being from the nation, it's a real concern. The pandemic of missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls continues to spread across the country and into each and every community, including the interior of British Columbia, where Caitlin Potts disappeared and is presumed dead. Is there a personal connection to her murderer? Are there multiple predators taking women? Or is a serial killer on a killing spree? Caitlin and her family deserve answers and justice. Caitlin Potts' homicide investigation continues with assistance from community advocates, RCMP, and the public rallying to take action and build awareness around Caitlin's story. Her family is motivated and working diligently towards bringing her killer to justice. If you have any information that might help solve the case of the disappearance and murder of Caitlin Potts, visit our website. Caitlin Potts was last seen on February 21st, 2016 at the Orchard Park Mall in Kelowna, British Columbia. Her whereabouts after being captured on security footage is unknown. During the initial stages of the investigation, some of the information that came forward was that it was, there was a possibility uh, that uh, Caitlin had traveled to Alberta uh, and that uh, we were aware that she had uh, ties to the Edmonton area in, in Alberta and that the information was that she may have gotten a ride to, uh, to Alberta. Now, uh, that um, was never substantiated and it was uh, our findings or our belief uh, that uh, Caitlin had never left uh, the Okanagan area. For Caitlin's family, the search was a massive undertaking in a region they weren't familiar with. You don't know where to start because it's like, it's, there's mountains, there's lakes, there's rivers, hill, like you, you, you don't even know where, you wanna look everywhere. I went to Enderby 
like a month after she went missing with my auntie. I made posters, missing posters. I went to the towns near Enderby and I've never been to BC. So driving through the mountains and in the small town, my auntie and I were handing flyers out and like posting them up everywhere. Jody Leon from Splats and First Nation has been a champion for families like Caitlin's, working with the community to mobilize searches and organize walks and vigils. And I think if there are over 4,000 missing women, even if people are not connected to any of the women, they can become advocates. They don't need to be experts, you know, within, within the community where they were advocating for somebody. And I would hope, you know, that people will come forward, be an advocate, pick out any, any picture of a woman who's gone missing close to you and make awareness of her known. In addition to organizing groundwork, Jody teams up with others to take the search to higher levels using drone technology. So the drone will fly out and it'll scope over the area, you know, and make sure that everything is safe. And then we record video, video footage, you know, of the area. And then from there, you know, we've got ground searchers that go down in a grid pattern and they will go down and basically search arm to arm um, over an entire area. While searching continues, police urge those who may have any information to step forward. Uh, I think one of the messages that uh, we always want to give individuals that may have information is first and foremost, never discount what you may think is a benign detail or innocuous type of thing. If you think that something might be helpful to an investigation, we always ask that individuals err on the side of caution and report it to the police you know, contact, uh, contact the investigators. Another uh, thing that we always, you know, remind people as well is that uh, things change in a person's situation, times change. Uh, it might be that at one point in time, um, it may have been personally difficult for somebody to come forward with information. Situations change. Uh, and, and nothing is ever held against a person for not coming forward and then later on coming forward. If anybody has any information, anything, like the day she went missing or just anything, like to come forward because, I mean, just like a little bit of information can help, you know? Like we have, we don't even have, there's so many different stories out there and I don't even know, was she last at the mall or was she last with her boyfriend? Caitlin's mother has faith that her daughter will be found. We're gonna find her. I know that. If 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 anyone has any any information out there, could you help us, please? Because uh, yeah, I'd like to bring Caitlin back. Jody Leon offers her advice in the search for Caitlin Potts. Oh, and I think that it would be helpful for a search to occur, you know, just in the water because where we live, you know, within the spot seen First Nation area, there is a lot of water, you know, within the area. And if you tour the land, you know, and there's a lot of places where there are terrain, you know, where people don't go. Until Caitlin and her family can be reunited, her sister was gifted with a very special visit. I had a dream about her like a week after she went missing. And in my dream, it was me and my other sister were looking for her in BC. And we came up to a house and we just it was like a log cabin, it was empty, and there was trees all around, and I remember going in this house looking for her, and all of a sudden my sister comes with uh, two other girls that were walking behind her, and she just comes walking normal, and I went running up to her, and I hugged her, and I said, where were you? Like I was yelling, and I gave her a hug and I pushed her <laughs> and I'm like, where were you? Everyone's worried. Like everyone, like you have everyone worried. And she's like, she's like, don't worry, I'm camping. I'm out camping with my friends. And I was like, well, you have to come back with us. Like, and she's like, I can't, I have to go. And then she just walked away with those girls into the trees and I woke up and I think that was Maybe just her, like her coming to visit. If Priscilla Potts could see her daughter Caitlin again, she would tell her. That I, that I love her and I miss her. I, I just miss her 
being around and you know um I miss her calling me you know mama or mama bear you know um she was the only one who called me that I miss having to talk to her you know about just about life If you have any information about the murder of Caitlin Potts, visit our website.